In this clip, Max shows us the benefits of parallel distortion by using it on a snare drum. And you might be asking yourself, why would I want to distort something like a snare? Well, sometimes in order to get more sustain or create energy without going to something like a reverb, using distortion can really give you a cleaner option to add some of those characteristics. He even tries putting an amp sim on the snare to get the tone he's looking for. Check it out. So now we have the snare that's very spiky. It works well with the overheads and roof. But it's short. Uh, I want to bring in some of the sustain. And also, I want to add something to this bleed. Because if you concentrate on the on the uh, symbols when listening to the snare microphone, it's very bright and dirty. I want it to sound a little uh, more fat. So let me duplicate. And I will call it snare distortion. And I will color it dark red because all the distortion is dark red. And uh, I will remove this plug. And we can play around with many plugins. In my case, I just, I have, you know, I am, I'm married to Decapitator, so I will have Decapitator. Let's see what we can do with the decapitator. I will turn on the punish mode and I will again apply the high pass before distortion. And it's such an amazing amazing thing to do with all the parallel distortion you can do in metal mixing because you can do that to bass. You can do this, this to kick and to snare. And to the toms, a lot of uh, uh, parallel distortion is usually applied to the toms to, to bring up the attack and meat and aggression. And also you can do that on vocals, on, on extreme vocals especially. You can do that with synthesizers to bring in the hit of some synth lead or synth pad into the metal mix. Let's return to the snare. But it's too bright. Let's bring up, uh, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, engage the high cat cut and uh, it will be in the steep mode. So it's like the guitar cabinet right now. It's like we're using the amp seam on the on the snare disc. And we could use the amp seam, by the way, just for fun. Just for fun. Let me do it just for fun. Uh, let's do it nolly. Most likely it's gonna uh it's gonna sound too phasey and it's probably will have some delay introduced. Way too much. Okay. Or You see, uh, why I usually prefer, uh, I will try it in the mix, so we'll compare it in the mix, but why I prefer uh, simple solutions on things like snare um, and more complex solutions on things like parallel distortion on bass and vocals, because uh, Decapitator, although it has this roll off and it might sound like a guitar cabinet because of that, it still doesn't introduce too much. It still doesn't have all these guitar cabinet peaks like, you know, three and a half, five something, six and two and everything. It doesn't have that complex picture of, of harmonics on top. And I don't want it to be very present in the mix. I just want, want it to sound more uh, more sustainy and have, have bigger tail and more dirt. So let's try the Decapitator first and then we'll try Nolly. First of all, I want to hear how Decapitator, because it has the high pass, it has it before distortion, but it has it. How does it work together with uh, with the clean snare? I definitely got that smack out of it, you know, like almost like if it was a music video it have 
some water poured in the drum. Almost like a river. And you can tell right now we have a lot of bleed in these sections in between snares, but maybe it's okay, let's hear. And you know what? I cannot tell if it's a bleed or, or if it's coming from the room and our heads. So the current amount of bleed in the snare, although it's a lot of bleed, let's turn off the overhead. The only thing that troubles me that sometimes we cut off the bleed right there here, and it might be noticeable, uh, or it might not be noticeable because we have uh, Tom Tom Fields here that will completely mask it. And we also have room and overheads that would also mask these cuts. So let's hear this place with overheads and room to make sure that it's safe to leave that much bleed. I don't hear it, so I think it's okay. So a lot of bleed in the in the snare. Uh, let's uh, let's pretend that you are working on a completely different snare, and you cannot allow that much bleed. Then probably I would do something like this. Uh, bef I will put the drum level or, or any other expander or a gate. I will do the same thing as zero compression. The same thing we did on the parallel. Uh, compression of the kick. I will do, I will remove some of the bleed, but not all the bleed. So the gate range will be like minus 10 dB. I just want to make sure that the snare is as amazing as it was before. Maybe a little short, make longer the recovery. So you can just back off uh, the bleed with something like the gate or the expander. Or if you can, you can just remove all the bleed. You still get that lo-fi push instead of just uh, a snap just a transient that we have we have you see we have that smash nice distorted smash i'm just curious how the nolly sounds also cool yeah i'll try it both in the mix let's hear nolly Now let's try Decapitator. Honestly speaking, it's hard to tell. I, I kind of prefer Decapitator, but both are cool. And I'll return the bleed. Let's actually, let's compare the bleed. Yeah, there's too much mid-range coming from this bleed. Like, everything sounds too compressed because of that, all the sim. So I, I don't want to kill all the bleed, but I'll do it like minus, maybe my, minus nine. So bleed may work for your advantage, and it should work for your advantage. Because otherwise, if you're just way too scared of the bleed, it's going to come there and punish you, and you will probably deal with a lot of problems in the toms, in the snare, and you will never be happy. But if you try to, just to accept that the bleed is there and you can use it for sculpting the tone, most likely you will just end up with, uh, with more natural and fuller drum mix. <laughs> 